Question. So what what do we know about this new model and the deep seek news? Yeah, so um, the new model is going to be called V4, which is a successor to V3, which was uh, launched in December 2024. And this new model um, features uh, very strong coding capabilities. Uh, DeepSeek employees um, conducted uh, testings based on their own internal benchmark, and those testings show that V4 outperforms uh, both, you know, Anthropic and OpenAI's models in coding. And, but obviously, and, the the proof is going to be in the pudding. We won't know if he really outperforms until you know we see what it is. Well, I mean, the first step is getting it out there. So <laughs> that's that's the, the 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 first step here. Talk to me about what is the difference between the the V series models and then the R one model that I know has gotten a lot of attention at DeepSeek. Yeah. So um, VC, V3 was launched in December 24, as I mentioned, and um, that model was already very good. It's a large language model, general purpose model, what we call, um, that, you know, already put the company um, on the map of the global a in the global AI community. And the R1, the R series, which we only had one generation so far, is what we call a, a reasoning model. Basically, it can perform like it takes time to think and then perform a series of tasks uh, in a logical se sequence. And that was the model, uh, by the way, which was released in January 2005, about a year ago, that, you know, uh, shocked, uh, that sent shockwaves. Uh, from Silicon Valley to Wall Street, uh, that was what we now call the deep seek moment. Okay. I wonder how you think about DeepSeek's model releases in the context of its position in the AI race. Is it in a similar sort of arms race uh, as we see here in North America with respect to just trying to get the best model? I mean, is it working on anything broader than the models and applications that people can use? Uh, so DeepSeek, as you know, is like a big champion um, for uh, open source. And then all of their models have been open source. And when R1 was uh, after VC, uh, V3, and excuse me, after V3 and uh, R1's releases, uh, it sort of started in China, um, this intensified as a competition, and then really like raised the, the awareness of open source uh, among the Chinese ALM developer uh, community. And then throughout 2025, we see companies from, you know, giants like Alibaba and Baidu to startups like uh, uh, Jiripu, Minimax, and Moonshot all rushed, raced to release their own open source model offerings. Um, and uh, however, in the same time, you know, DeepSeek simply, you know, sort of has gone quiet. Uh, you know, if they do release V4, like we write about in the next few weeks, around mid-February, mid that will be the, their first uh, major model release after they became a global sensation. And then in the U.S., as we know, uh, Lama developed by Meta uh, was, you know, a big champion, is a big champion of uh, open source, where I think most of the other model developers in the U.S. sort of have taken the closed source approach. And then the deep seek. A uh, moment last year also sort of uh, uh, incentivized some discussions over, you know, um, if we actually should, uh, in the U.S., if we should actually, you know, do more open source models as well. Um, and uh, right now, we, we haven't seen that really happening at a larger scale. Um, and then DeepSeek uh, plus, you know, the other Chinese model developers that have taken the open source route following DeepSeek's lead um, has in the past year really sort of made China, Chinese open source model really the most used uh, by number of tokens uh, around the world when it comes to just, you know, uh, open source models on their own. Great. Well, it is a story that we are following closely. Jing, I want to thank you for coming on. That is Jing Yang, our Asia Bureau Chief here at The Information.